<clears throat> another statutory remedy that is available, and, and really this can be available, it's not really limited to construction defect claims, but I, th I think it's worth mentioning, uh, is the Florida Deceptive and Unfair Trade Practices Act, and um, that is uh, codified at, at Chapter 501. Um, that protects the consuming public uh, essentially from people that engage in unfair methods of competition or unconscionable, deceptive, or unfair acts or practices in the conduct of any trade or commerce. That is a really broad uh, definition. I mean, just about, I think, anyone could fit under that definition. And in Florida, we call this the little FTC Act, of the Federal Trade Commission Act. It is modeled after the, its federal counterpart. And so if you happen to have a, a, a defect situation where you think that the the party on the other side engage in some unfair deceptive practice, um, again, I sometimes see these claims just thrown in um, along along with uh, along with other claims. And the remedies under the statute are cumulative. So obviously you can bring what other other remedies you may have. Um, but also bring a claim under the Unfair and Deceptive Trade Practices Act. Now, you only get uh, actual damages. You don't get consequential damages under the statute. And, of course, you get attorney's fees and costs if you are the prevailing party. It does not cover claims for uh, personal injury uh, or death or, or property damage uh, to um, other property, other than the property which is the subject of the construction. And so it, it does have some limited application if you're dealing with a, a collapse or, I don't know, some damage to other property that's uh, outside of just the defective construction itself. The statute is not going to apply. Now, one of the things, and I, and I like this provision, because I don't like it if I'm bringing the claim, but if I'm defending the claim, if I think that the other side merely brought this claim because there was no other way to get attorney's fees under Florida law, uh, I'm not sure how it is in other jurisdictions, but here in Florida, the only way you get attorney fees from your opponent is either the contract that you're suing other provides a prevailing party attorney fee provision or the statutory cause of action that you're bringing says that you get attorney's fees. And so we saw that with, uh, with the Magnuson Moss Act. That provides uh, attorney's fees. Um, the UCC does not. Um, the uh, implied warranty claims under the uh, Florida's Condominium Act do not have a basis for attorney's fees. Go figure. There are so many condominium claims here in Florida. I'm surprised that that wasn't put in the statute, or maybe it's because of that that uh, that uh, developers had a strong lobby in Tallahassee and uh, made sure that attorney's fees were not a uh, part of the statute. But with unfair and deceptive trade practices, uh, the prevailing party does get attorney's fees. So if you've got no other remedy that provides for attorney's fees because either your contract doesn't provide for one, uh, or some other statutory cause of action that you're bringing does not allow for it, sometimes attorneys will throw in an unfair and deceptive trade practice claim. But the other side can uh, file a motion with the court and require the other side to put up a bond in order to bring that claim. And you have to have a motion filed and you have to have an evidentiary hearing. But if the court, after an evidentiary hearing, determines early on that the claim is uh, frivolous, or appears frivolous, or without legal or factual merit, or brought for the purpose of harassment, the court can, it's not going to knock out the claim at that stage, but the court can require the party bringing the claim to post a bond um, to uh, potentially cover the uh, attorney's fees and costs um, that, uh, that may be incurred. 